What's up, everybody? It's Art, and today we are going to talk about malicious file uploads and specifically using what's called a web shell. Hey, Art, what exactly is a web shell? I'm really glad you asked. Uh, if you've ever used a uh, shell terminal, things like uh, Bash, uh, then you can think of a web shell as effectively a web interface that allows you to execute shell commands directly from a website. And as you might imagine, any website that allows you to execute commands directly within the shell, the command line sitting on the, on the server, would be a very, very bad thing for any website as it would allow you to do any number of things directly on the server things that a website really should never, ever allow you to do. I was recently doing a penetration test for one of my clients, and this happened to be a vulnerability that I stumbled into. It's something that you see quite a bit on platforms like Hack the Box, and I figured digging into uh, how malicious file uploads work, what, well, uh, what web shells are, and more specifically, how to prevent this from happening to your own web applications would make for a great video. So let's jump right in and take a look. So to demonstrate how to work with malicious file uploads and web shells, we're going to be utilizing a project called the Dam Vulnerable Web Application from the OWASP organization, which you can find on GitHub from uh, Digit Ninja. Uh, who's the active maintainer of the project. And you see, scroll down into the readme, you get the damn vulnerable web application. This is one of the OWASP flagship projects. And uh, there's a lot of really good stuff in here, but we're gonna skip right ahead to running this locally on my machine. Uh, if I wanted to uh, pull down the repo and uh, uh, clone it via Git, uh, I certainly can do that, or in this case, I just want to run it directly from my command line using uh, Docker. So if I flip over to my terminal and run uh, Docker, it will spin up the uh, uh, Docker container. And flipping back to my browser, you'll see we land at the damn vulnerable web application login screen. And the username and password are the default credentials for this app, which are noted in that GitHub readme, simply admin and password. And logging in, first thing we have to do is hit this create or reset database, and that'll take just a moment to run. And then you'll see it kicks us back to the login screen where we can again log in using admin and password. And without getting into all of the specifics, just know that damn vulnerable web application has lots of different uh, uh, vulnerabilities for you to explore and learn about web application security. But specifically, we are going to look at the file upload feature here where we can pick any file to upload directly to this application. So the vulnerability we are here to talk about today is malicious file uploads, or uh, perhaps more generally, uh, just not validating what sort of file you expect to be uploaded to your application. A very common vulnerability that uh, application developers accidentally leave in their apps is something like an image upload. Let's say uh, you have an application where the user can log in, they have a user profile, they want to upload some sort of user profile picture. Well, if you aren't careful about validating that the user really should only upload an image versus some sort of other malicious file like a PHP script, a shell script, a Python script, anything that you might imagine, um, then obviously bad things might happen. So uh, in this case, we're just gonna pick a file uh, off of my hard drive and then upload that to see what we can do. Now, the title of this video is titled Web Shells. And this is a good opportunity for us to uh, come over to another GitHub repo. This, uh, this one titled Web Shell and for uh, 
For Clarity, there are any number of web shells that you can get off of GitHub and uh, of the internet at large, or certainly you could write your own. This is a really cool repo though, because it breaks down web shells according to different kinds of programming languages. So if you run into a situation where maybe you can upload uh, files of a certain kind, uh, perhaps uh, uh, ASPX or uh, CGI, JavaScript, things like that, um, then a repo like this makes it really easy to come and find the specific kind of file you might be looking for. In my case, I already have a uh, PHP script on my hard drive that I like to use from my uh, hackings on Hack the Box. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Choose File and find that file on my hard drive. You can see that I have chosen a file called webshell.php. I'm going to go ahead and upload that. And again, if this were a profile picture upload, uh, two things are, are going to catch your eye. Number one, that I'm uploading a PHP file, not a JPEG, uh, a GIF, or PNG, or some sort of uh, a, a typical image file that you would find on the website. That was not validated both on the client side as well as on the server side. So that's the crux of this particular software vulnerability. So now that the server has allowed me to upload that file, I can simply grab the URL in this case and put that directly into my browser here. And here we are looking at the interface for my web shell. So again, the vulnerability is the fact that I'm allowed to upload a file of any type. And a web shell is a specific tool that's going to allow me to interact with the underlying web server. In this case, it's a Docker container. I happen to know it's a Linux Docker container, so I might do some sort of command like a uh, who am I? and I can execute that. It's going to tell me I'm user WW data, or perhaps I want to do something uh, something different. Maybe I want to do uh, an ls-al, uh, double ampersand, and then what's cat out, I don't know, uh, Etsy uh, password, and let's see what happens. And in this case, uh, you're going to find out that the directory that I'm in uh, it has certain files here, and then underneath that is the contents of the Etsy password file. So use your imagination here. Uh, there are all sorts of things you might want to do if you had access to the command line of the underlying web server. Certainly you might want to try to escalate the permissions from www data as a user who typically has their permissions locked down to only do web server type activities. If I can escalate those privileges up to a, a different user, perhaps even all the way up to root, I could own the entire web server, anything that's hosted on there, any activities that I might want to do as a hacker would all be really bad things. This should probably go without saying, but you should never ever upload one of these web shells to a web server that you do not personally own. Never try to do this on a third party website or a web server that you don't have administrator access and permission to do some of these items on as it can be highly illegal. The FBI will come knocking on your door. Don't do it. The fact of the matter is this is a common vulnerability that lots of web application developers simply don't bother to validate the kinds of uh, files that should be uploaded. And again, you need to validate it in two places. Number one is always validating it in the HTML form, which is really very easy to do. Uh, and secondly, you want to validate the, uh, the input of the binary file on the server side. There's a number of different technologies that you might implement depending on the kind of server you have, the kind of uh, software code you have running on the back end, but you definitely, definitely want to do that. So 
if you are a software developer and you're worried about whether or not your application is susceptible to things like malicious file uploads, you're worried about somebody executing a web shell, please reach out to me. I do this sort of uh, software consulting. I do penetration tests. I would love to help you out. Uh, you can find my website in the, uh, uh, the link below here, and I'd love to reach out and help you with your next project. But until next time, stay safe out there, everybody, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.